Hello. So today, again, I'm not exactly sure what we're going to paint, but I think I inspired myself from my own piece that I messed up on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my plexiglass. This is a thick piece. I have this linked in my Amazon store on Instagram. I think it's one of my favorite things to paint on. So I use all the time. And so I'm going to take my 100% cotton paper. Um, honestly, I forgot which one this is. I cut a whole pile of it and cannot remember which block I took it off of and which one I'm using. So, unfortunately for that, it's either Arsh, it's not Baohong, I don't believe. No, um, I just don't know what it is. I don't think it's Arsh either, quite honestly. But anyway, I'm going to tape it down. So I tape my tops and my bottoms first. I'm taking it, taping it to the board so I have control. You can use cardboard, you can use a clipboard, you can use um, an old cutting board, you can use something you find at the dollar store. You can use a thin piece of plexiglass they sell on Amazon, the really cheap ones, but it could warp. And this is so strong, I, I can't bend it if I tried. I mean, I probably could if I really tried, but it's not gonna bend or warp under heat. And I'd use the heat tool a lot. Or not a lot, but I use it often enough that I think it's handy to have something that does not warp under the heat tool. So, taped off tops, bottom, sides, 100% cotton. And I'm gonna grab my tape back, actually, and I prop, so I'm gonna use it as a prop. So what I'm gonna do, I have some paint over here that I used earlier. This was my inspiration color. And what I have here is some neutral tint, okay? That's a very dark, almost a pretty much a black. And then what I grabbed, and I suggest and I recommend you try any colors you have. Don't, don't just stick with what I'm telling you. I have orchid. So I have a black so far, an orchid. I'm going to grab some pumpkin orange, like a rusty orange color. I'm gonna mix that in there. I'm gonna get a little bit more water to dilute that. I'm gonna rinse off my brush and I'm gonna grab more orange. I feel like that wasn't quite enough, okay? Um, so I'm mixing those three colors together so far. And now I'm gonna grab a color called Dying Embers. It is a bit of a red, red orange. I'm gonna spray that one more time, just at the top, just to really get it going. So I'm gonna take my loaded up brush, load it up nice and thick, and I'm gonna top, I'm gonna drop it at the top. Okay, so my paint immediately went under there. So it's going to do that, and if it leaks, it's not a huge deal. All right, so we're gonna let this do some fun stuff. I'm gonna load it up pretty thick, okay? And then I'm going to use the technique that I saw on Sarah Cray's uh, tutorial, her YouTube channel that she does her tutorials on and so now it kind of looks kind of funky right so we can do two things we could spray this water and let it go crazy or we could take our dry our dry brush that's completely dry don't get it wet completely dry brush and we can spread this down pull it down and we could be drying off as we go I should be doing drying off okay so dry off as we go okay so let that go as far as you want it can go pretty far if you want. You can stop it lower if you want. Experiment, play, um, whatever interests you the most, okay? So I'm gonna do one more layer just like that. One more layer just like that. Set my brush out to the side. Let us do its thing for a second. I'm gonna let it do its thing for a minute and see what it does on its own. Let it run, let it run. I could, again, spray it with water if you wanted to, if you wanted to experiment. I don't want any harsh lines. I'm gonna brush those away. Like, see these harsh lines I'm getting here? I'm just gonna kinda Wisp those away, that first layer anyway. So now once I cover my page and all my white's gone, if you like the white, by all means leave it. Like if there's that white's being stubborn in the corner right there. Okay, now I'm gonna take my brush and I'm gonna dry it off. So I have a cloth, a piece of dirty old fabric right here next to me and I'm just gonna dry it off like that. <laughs> all right, getting the brush again. And I'm gonna go at the top. You could use any combination of colors. I do recommend using a good combination of colors. I'm gonna add a little more neutral tint in there. Just there, and I'm gonna grab, this time, this is new for me, I'm gonna grab a little bit of the dying embers. And I'm also gonna drop that in there, okay, separately. I didn't mix it. You will see things separating out as it goes, but I was seeing, I wanted to see what would happen if I kind of dropped it together. And I'm really loving what's happening. I think in my one I did previously, my mess up, complete mess up, but I was exploring and that's okay. And that's what led us here. So exploring will lead you, because I had no idea what I was gonna do this week. And um, I was exploring with my subscribers uh, on Instagram Live and I love this color. So I started playing with it and thought, you know what? I'll just do a spin off this and see what happens. So this is another one of those, see what happens. Okay, so we're gonna see what happens. <laughs> um, So, play you can swoop these up you can let them stay like that if you like that 
I might leave that like this. This one's a little harsh. I'm going to brush that one out just a little bit, I think. Because I like those ones that are doing that. But you know what? My water's, my paper's drying over here. So it's probably not the best idea. But I'm going to spray it again at the top. And it's okay if stuff moves, honestly. Um, what I'll do is I'll make sure that's all wet. And then I'm just going to get the excess water off the bottom. And then I'm going to just give that a little, yeah, I like that better. I didn't want the really harsh lines there. All right, so I'm gonna do one more. I'm gonna go through again. I'm gonna drop color in again. And this time I might take a little bit of what I use, neutral tint, so a black and an orange, a red and a orchid color. So I'm gonna mix this orange right here and just kind of dilute a little bit. And then I'm gonna drop it in as well. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of that orchid and I'll drop that in as well. A little bit of more orchid. That's straight orchid, so I don't know. We'll see, okay? And then grab some neutral tint and put that on top of there. Again, we're just exploring, seeing where this is gonna take us. And if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out, that's okay. Um, so ultimately, what Sarah Cray has you be doing, has you be doing, has you doing, is creating a sky that's raining coming down on, on a scene, right? And I did mine, I took three times and I finally got it and I was like, okay, this is, this is good. I got it, I got it, I got it. And I was excited. Um, play with water levels by the way, too, with this um, drier paint, lesser paint, more water, less, you know, play around, see what works for you. And um, so, yeah, see, I like the darkness I'm getting and then pulling a little bit more dark up. And you know, this will this will dry lighter. So that's okay too, right? Everything will dry lighter. All right, so now, do you have this color rain coming down on you? No, right? That's what I thought. I was like, oh man, this isn't really rain color. What did I do? What the heck? This isn't what I, you know, what I meant to do. So I don't want to lose too much of that darkness down there. So I'm just going to try to, or maybe I will lose that darkness. I don't know. I'm going to try to do that. So then let me just make sure. So again, if you want to make sure that you're not getting too much of that and, you know, the, the water going back in your paper, wipe off your edges like this. And then, that see, funny enough, I was holding my board the whole time. I didn't use the tape. That's funny must be my control issues, right? I'm like, I will control this. <laughs> I will control. I will have control. <laughs> no, I don't have control. Wake up, Amber. You will not have control. Then we'll turn it around. A dark and moody forest. All right. And if that's the case, then maybe we need to add some trees in here. So I'm going to take a dagger brush just a longer pointier brush. And I think that I'm going to just, I know that my paper's super wet still. So I'm gonna add in some tree shapes, okay? So we kind of created the backdrop of the sky and now we're gonna go back in and try to maybe add a little bit of depth, like faded back into the background kind of a tree feel, you know? So that when this dries, we'll just have shapes of trees in the background and we'll be able to build on top of that. So what I'm gonna do is just add those shapes and they're more like triangles, right? With some pokey out pieces that hopefully um, resemble tree. That was a little dark, I didn't wanna go that dark. Will resemble or suggest is what I like to say, suggest trees. So what I'm gonna do for this one is I'm just gonna go back through and just take my wet brush and kind of, it'll dry a lot lighter. See, it's already fading to the back, which is perfect. That's good. Um, and so then I don't want to lose some of this. I love what's going on here and I don't want to lose that middle area. I really, really like what's happening. So I think I already put one up here, but I'm going to do another one. Yeah, what I'll do is I'll put the tree top up here. So there's some contrast. Hopefully that'll look like a tree and that's okay if it doesn't. Again, we're just suggesting right now so that we're building so we can build onto it with the next few layers and it's already pretty dark. So this this mine particularly is going to go dark. If you don't want yours dark, this dark, don't do it this dark, right? Um, and again, just kind of building up. So I'm maybe even just doing the tree tops so that you just see those in the mist, right? And you can kind of see the funky colors coming out. You can see the orange and the orchid, the neutral tints, the super dark, right? Almost black. And so we're just, just gonna go in here and build up some colors and stuff in that that fuzz in there is just gonna pretend it's a tree. <laughs> I don't think it wants to go away. So this is again, another invitation for you to explore. So what this seems to be doing, um, these tutorials seem to be more 
the, um, invitations for you, right? For you to explore, to see where, where your art's going to lead you versus, um, versus me trying to tell you what to do. Okay. So I've built up that first, first, the first layer was the, the wash, right? Going down. Second layer was these, um, lighter trees. They didn't turn out very light, but we're going to dry it and then we'll see how, um, how light they are. And then we'll see how much darker we need to go. Dried it all. And my paper is a little cool to touch, which means it's not quite dry right here. Um, and that's okay for what we're doing. But if you didn't want it to be, then you, you definitely want to make sure you dried it all the way. Um, and you don't want it cool to the touch. Like down where I know I put more water, up here it's fine. It's still warm from the from the heat. Okay, so I'm going to mix it, go back to oh my color. Up. Just building up my paint here. I'm going to add some more neutral tint. And then I'm going to add some of my dying embers. Ooh, got a lot of that. That's okay. All right. I think I like that. You can always test it to see if you like it. Um, but I pretty much can tell it's going to be dark enough for me. So I'm going to go for it. Now I'm going to drop mine down a little bit. See how a lot of the trees pretty much went away into the mist. And that is fine. That is what we, we were going for, really. And so now I'm just going to start dropping in some trees. And I don't do a tree tutorial. There are so many out there with so many amazing people that do so many better tutorials than I could ever do with trees. And so I'm going to go ahead and leave those out there until until I master <laughs> some amazing trick for trees. I'm not going to try to duplicate what everybody else has already done much better than I could at this point in time. So I am just, um, just dancing my brush around, bouncing it around back and forth to get these trees to do something right um and that's you know not much else i can say for trees at this time because i'm not the tree expert but i do like to wet them at the bottom to get them to kind of go back into the area sometimes and then let's put these guys right another guy next to it and we're just going to build up trees and see what we like see this could be a cliff which now i'm leaning towards i actually like that idea my fuzz left a white piece of a white mark so now I'm kind of liking this like whole cliff idea, which I had no idea I was going to go for. And so perhaps I will just keep dropping it down there. I'm liking that. There we go. All right, let's just do that. Let's go with that. I'm going to stick a little friend in here just to fill up the space. Just keep adding your trees. And now again, we're going to take our brush. I'm going to grab my mop. Now that I've added the row of trees, I'm going to take my mop fairly wet, not soaking wet, just wet enough. And then I'm just going to wet this bowl, bowl bottom half. Not with paint, I'm just going to use the wet brush. Okay, and then try not to move paint around too much. And then I'm going to just go back and make sure everything looks good. Like this tree kind of lost its top. Um, that tree looks okay. Maybe add a little one right in here. Just kind of. Maybe that was a mistake, and that's okay. Um, again, it doesn't have to be perfect. And these trees do look kind of dwarfed, and these look like giant trees, and that's okay. It's all it's all fun. It's all practice. It doesn't really matter. If you're that picky, you can start over and do it again, and that's okay. So I'm going to dry. And now for this last layer, I'm going to still use this paint that I've already mixed up, but I'm just going to add a lot of neutral tint to it. So I'm almost going to make it black, right? I want it to be pretty darn thick and creamy. And I want it to be really rich, really rich in color, pretty much black. I'm going to try the silver silk, silver silk brush size 10. And I'm going to, I say try because I try all my brushes for all my trees. And I like to try different ones. I think it's important to try a lot of different brushes, especially on something that maybe you haven't mastered yet. Maybe you're just missing the one like, you know, that one brush that's just going to make it so much easier for you to do and maybe not maybe it won't at all maybe it'll make it miserable and you're like oh nope nope i like that other brush way better or nope that wasn't the brush for me and that's that's it that's what you want to learn right you want to learn all these things you want to know that i tried that and it doesn't work for me and that's okay it may work for that other person they can make trees like i specifically brought this bought this one brush because you know the lady i know makes some magical trees with it and um sure as sure as whatever i can't do it <laughs> Not at all. My trees are not magical with it. I, I can't even get anything out of the brush. I can't even use the brush as a liner brush or a little, you know, pointy, whatever it's supposed to be. I forget what kind of brush it is. It's like a mini, 
mini something. And I guess I should play, again, I should play with that brush because I haven't touched it in a while. And I was so disappointed that I couldn't, you know, make it work for me. It's like, what? How can she do beautiful brushes and I can't do crap with it? <laughs> I really can't. I'm just going in here and going to try to put my last trees in. And I'm, again, I'm just kind of almost stippling them in with this brush. So just playing and just adding in where I think the last tree should go. And that's it. That's going to be wrap. Um, a wrap. Just seeing if I'm looking from above again to see if I want anything else. And I actually don't think I do. I think this is it. Um, you do see where my fuzz left the white line. I'm just going to leave it and pretend it's like an old sepia photo. And that's the like scar on the picture, right? And go with it. And that's it. Um, I was going to mess with this. It's a kind of a funky tree line. One goes this way, that way, this way, that way. These ones are all kind of straight up and down. I could add something right in here but I kind of like the light and I like the light here. So I think I'm just going to listen to my gut and stop. <laughs> I'll dry one more time. I'll dry. I do think I'm going to add some birds to this. I'm going to get some watery, <clears throat> watery mixture here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a bird. Now birds aren't my strong point, but I'm going to try. Okay. And I'm going to see a practice sometimes on my palette there. Okay, one bird, two birds, and I'm just gonna go three birds, and I'll go one more. Well, not one more, now I have to do more because, you know, birds go in odd, odd numbers. There we go, I'm gonna stop. <laughs> That's it for the birds. Whew, I held my breath the whole time. I, my birds are my nemesis right now. I just can't do birds. So my paper's pretty warped. It, this is when a block is super handy. Um, I love blocks for that reason. Keep your work nice and flat. So I'm just dabbing off the corners where the where the watercolor did go underneath. And again, it doesn't super bother me. I know. So there we go. Um, this week's theme is rain and water, and so this misty, drizzly forest. <laughs> let's call it drizzly forest. Is is there now did i do full on rain no but i hope you enjoyed and i hope you explore and I hope you find a color combination that works for you and that you uh enjoy creating versus the actual outcome maybe you really enjoy the process and i hope you do and i know i do and so that's what i hope to inspire thank you see you next time